you can see we've got this raised bit here where the wheel arch starts to curve over. So to compensate for this, I'm just going to cut in along there. And I'm going to cut a sort of small triangle out. And that will give me a little room to play with. So I'll press this side down first. Have it. So just a quick note when you're installing insulation like this, we don't want to compress it, it needs to be able to breathe so that it can work as it should. As you can see, it's sitting proud of this beam that's running across here. Once we put our timber batten in place, as you can see, it's gonna sit flush with the timber batten and allow it to work as it should. And then we can use that timber batten later to screw our cladding into. So our split charge kit comes with two fuses and we want to install these as close as we can to the positive terminals on both the van's battery and our leisure battery. So this first one I'm going to install under the hood here yeah, and I've just made sure that I'm not going to penetrate anything I don't want to behind this piece of metal.
as you can see we've got quite a few cables running through here now I'm just running a red and black to most of all these we're gonna have four switches up here so I like to tie um, every cable at the end just to make sure it doesn't accidentally get pulled through later and then I put a little label on it just to remind me later down the line we'll go to hook all these up um, as to which uh, destination it's going to Okay, so next up I'm going to clad this door and I'd really like it to marry up with the cladding here on the wall. So what I've done is just cut down a little piece of cladding to go on the top here. And as you can see those lines are just going to meet up really nicely when it goes to cutting this to shape and installing it.
Alright, so just thought I'd give you a quick update on how things are doing in here. Because we've basically done the entire sort of structural bones of the van as it were. We've got the sound deadening, the insulation is in, all the battens were then in place to support the shelving unit and this recessed storage as well as some of the cladding. Cladding has all been scribed to fit and all of the screw holes have then been covered with wooden dowels and sanded back. Uh, we've also got these wheel arch boxes that are now in. The floor base is in, we've got a window in here, we've got the solar panel mounted on the top. All the first fix of the wiring is in so we can later connect it during the second fix. Um, as you can see we've got this overhead storage which I'll talk about a little bit later. That was quite difficult to fit in with the existing overhead storage but we've made it work. And um, yeah, woke up pretty excited this morning because today we get to see things looking a bit more 3D as we begin to make the first of the three units that are going to be fitting inside this van. So um, everything is going to really come to life now. So I'm really looking forward to this part. <laughs> As you can see I've got a couple of supports here and I've cut out my plywood base for the shelf hopefully slot into place. Nice. This 
going to be our little shelf unit that's going to go in that little recessed area in the side of the camper. And as you can see, I'm just cutting all of these 45 degree angles on the face frame itself. And we're leaving a little bit of an overlap, just under a centimetre, to allow us to fix it onto the side wall. And you can probably see that this side here is actually a fair bit wider than these three. The reason being is that we're going to adhere the LED tape light under here, and then that should be out of sight. mug as you can see I've been cutting out all these little parts here to try and create a little Aztec kind of design with the mirror still visible I'm gonna add a little bit of color to these got off a couple of little test pots so I'm gonna try a couple of these out So I'm just framing the kitchen unit here and I've got to make room for the cool box and the cooker and I've hit a little bit of a snag in doing so. So from this end it doesn't feel too enclosed but if I take you around the other side you can probably get the feel here that the room is quite tight. So I think I'm going to undo some of the work that I've done to bring this back slightly. So ultimately then just a very minor change, I've only taken two centimetres off. Even so though, even that little amount is going to help that entry feel a little wider.
and as you can see there's a two mil gap on all three sides here uh, that's just to leave enough distance uh, for it to travel between the open and closed position I've done this cut out with a router and then I've just beveled the edge as well uh, with a 45 degree angled bit and um, that's given it uh, just a bit of a nicer finish so all the hinges in, the door works, we've just got to have the catch on So just want to draw your attention to the shelf above the side unit here um, so as you can see I've just um, clamped these pieces of timber in place just to make it all nice and flush with the side unit and I've also glued up an extra piece of timber on top of the shelf unit because I've had to scribe uh, this large curve that's going across the roof here um, so it all fits very nicely These screws here go into a supporting button that runs along the back wall here and then same again at the top so that's going to give it loads of support.
Okey smokey, we're going to do the bed frame next. So the DVLA requires a bed that is a minimum of 1.8 meters long if we want to get it changed on the V5. So that's just about right here and taking the kitchen unit into account. So I'm going to create a rectangle around here and then we're going to do a little add-on for this little section uh, that's going to be boxed off just there. My little test seat, check the height. So I'm just about to finish the bed unit and I'm just about to fix the slats to the moving part of the frame and I've just created this little space here to save me having to make these measurements over and over again. I can just pop this up against the end of the slat, um, draw in these holes here and uh, it's going to save me loads of time. <laughs>
this cushion here has a bit of an unusual shape to it, as you can see. Uh, basically, the wheel arch um, is sitting underneath this um, cushion. Hence why we've got this recessed area to account for that, to allow it all to sit flush. This corner was cut out, one of the um, structural parts of the van was in the way here. So I've cut this base plate for my cushion into three separate parts, just like so. I'm going to sew these bits together. And for anyone that does any sewing, I've made a half inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. 